Hello and welcome to Sembang St. Paul. This is a show run by St. Paul's Anglican Church in Petaling Jaya. Once again, this is uh, your host, Darren Ong. This program, we hear casual conversations by Christians about how our faith connects with how we live. For this episode, we will discuss the parable of the prodigal son. My name is Dr. Darren Ong, and I will be your host for today. And for today, for this episode, our guests are Laura Balan and Dorothy Stephen Bala. Uh, Laura, would you like to say hello to our viewers? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Darren, for having us today. Uh, Dorothy, would you like to say hello to our viewers? Hello, my name is Dorothy. Okay, thank you. So the topic for today's Sembang is the prodigal son. The prodigal son is one of the parables of Jesus. Uh, as we mentioned in a previous Sembang St. Paul episode, Jesus liked to teach using parables. Parables are short stories with a meaning behind them. And this parable of the prodigal son is one of the most famous and beloved of Jesus's parables. So let me just read it briefly in case some have uh, not heard of it. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. 
he was lost and is found. So let me now ask our panelists, Dorothy and Laura, why do you think Jesus wanted to tell this story? What lessons do you think that he intended to teach? Dorothy, uh, could we hear your opinion? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, the lessons that I, I got to learn uh, from reading The Prodigal Child is um, that we have to be, um, we have to know that, uh, that he's waiting for you with open arms. So like we have to be grateful for the unconditional love and forgiveness that will greet you when you come back home. Make, and also you have to make an effort to curb further from being disobedient or disrespect. Example, the father um, accepted the son, even though uh, he, he asked his share of the money and he lives, ta- he lives down and he also spent all his uh, money uh, recklessly. Uh, the father still accepted him, even though he disobeyed uh, the father. So the second lesson is I've learned is it's only about uh, you and God, as in like it's a relationship between you and God. So the parable of the prodigal son is about living your life. So it's more about you and God and not worrying about keeping score with um, anyone else. Like we have to be thankful that he's there for you. And when you follow him, you will always be there. He will always be there. I mean, you will always be there to welcome you back, even though we have failed our sins against him. So um, as in like, even though we have like sinned and we have failed him in so, so many ways, um, he still work, welcomes us back. And also end of the day, it's, it's about our personal relationship with God. And no matter what our thoughts or action, he will always love us and welcome us wholeheartedly when we turn to him. Okay, wonderful, Dorothy. Yeah, and those are two very important lessons of how God loves us and how you know, we shouldn't try to compare with other people. Uh, Laura, uh, could we hear your thoughts on this question? Like, what do you think Jesus <laughs> intended to teach by this parable? What's the okay. lesson here? Uh, the, the, the story of the prodigal son actually here, which is told by Jesus, actually goes out to show that um, God will accept any sinner who repents, we must remember at the end, this prodigal son, he came back to the father. So he, uh, no matter what we have done, God will always accept any sinner who repents. So the father in the story is actually meant to represent God. And the prodigal son here is meant to represent all of us. Right. So I agree with uh, Dorothy when when she said that this um, it shows God's unconditional love that is very important so we must remember that his unconditional love is actually waiting for us to return home where he greets us with open arms and the other thing that i also learned in this uh, prodigal son is of course the message of forgiveness yeah and redemption so the story of this prodigal son is one of uh, where it shows number one pride of the prodigal son Number two, it shows while living, how the prodigal son went about uh, living and spending lavishly. The third failure, he actually, he knew that he was uh, going down and he was uh, actually failing in whatever he was doing. And finally, it was uh, the realization that, that repentance is actually required for a clean start. So we must remember that there is always uh, hope for reconciliation as he did every day. The father walked from his home to the small hill where he could look just down the road and he would just wait in anticipation and to find that a familiar figure is coming there and was so happy just to see the sun coming. You know, so this is what uh, uh, I can get from this prodigal son parable. Okay, thank you, Laura. And those are really important lessons indeed. You know, how uh, God really desires reconciliation with us. You know, he doesn't want to punish sinners. He wants us to return to him. Yes. You know, and, that, that, yeah, and that's something that we need to do. And it's something that's really important. And that's, yeah, that's one of the important lessons of this parable. And as many of the parables of Jesus are, you know, there are many lessons we can learn. And yeah, that's one reason why this story is is so beloved. Uh, let's 
and one reason uh, that you no, know, I personally you know, really like the story is that it is so relatable mm. in many ways. You know, I think it's true for many people. Uh, there are many times in my life when I felt that, you know, I I am just like this younger son, and there are also times where I felt that you no, know, I'm I'm just like the older son. You know, the one who's angry that the father was so accepting of the prodigal. And I, I think that speaks to how good a story this is. You know, it's something that you know, we see in the way that we relate to God and we relate to other people, you know, that we, are, we see ourselves as characters in the story. Yes. So I would like to invite our panelists, uh, Laura and Dorothy, uh, to share about the times in their lives where they felt that they were like the younger son or when they felt uh, they were like the older son. Uh, since Dorothy answered first last time, I'm going to invite I'm going to invite Laura to answer first this time. So, All Laura, right. go thank ahead. You, uh, thank you, Darren. Actually, there are three characters in this parable of the prodigal son, yeah? Uh, the father, number one, the older son or the older brother, and the younger son, who is actually the prodigal son. Um, I actually see myself in all these three characters, <laughs> all right? For the first one, father, um, being a mother of two boys, it is only natural for a mother to somehow forgive her children who sometimes have hurt her. So this is where the unconditional love comes into action. So as how our father in heaven forgives us, we too need to forgive our children. That's one. Uh, secondly, I see myself also as a, a prodigal son uh, where well, all of us, we have sinned against God. And, I, and somehow when we have sinned, or rather I have sinned, I run to him for forgiveness. And God... Being our father, he opens his arms and he forgives us as what stated in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So we still, we, we go back to the Lord. And the, uh, the other character, which is the older brother, uh, I connected to my career. Uh, I consider myself as the older brother here in this sense to simply because... Um, well, I have been probably deprived also in certain promotions at work. And the younger brother, in fact, my colleagues, yeah, they get all the benefits, for example, the promotions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When sometimes we, I find that they have not been really like working as hard as they ought to, like the older brother. So that's why I, I find that I fit into all these three uh, characters. Okay, thank you, Laura. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, right? You can also relate to the father as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's that speaks again like how deep and layered the story is. Just the lessons to learn by putting yourself into yes, all those three roles. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Dorothy, uh, same question to you. Uh, in what ways, uh, in what times in your life have you felt like you were the younger brother, or you felt like the older brother, or maybe the father? I don't know. Um. Yeah. So could you please uh, answer that question too? So if, if it when it comes to um, character, I think most of us has been in the in the prodigal child uh, position because uh, I I am not the father because I've not been experienced so much in my life. So like in my teenage um, years, I think we can more re relate to the prodigal child because like we all are, you know, we have been so stubborn and like we have quarrelled with our parents. And you know, we have seen definitely so like um so like uh, even though like we get into an argument with our parents and like misunderstanding, um somehow like if, even though we don't talk to our parents about it, because after an argument we normally don't talk, right? So we don't talk, like our parents somehow will come and talk to us. Like they 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 forget about the argument we had and they forget the issue and just talk talk to us as normal so like in a, in that sense we can um, see that um, our parents just forgive us even though like we got into an argument and forgive us and welcome us um, wholeheartedly you know they just forget about it so that's why so in in my opinion I feel like uh, I could relate more to the prodigal child yeah All right thank you yeah the younger brother and yeah it's, it's wonderful that you can you have the maturity to see like the you know, the love and forgiveness that your parents have for you. And I think that's another part of this story that you know, 
it's important, right? If you can think of it as the Heavenly Father, but it also speaks a lot about how earthly parents should act and how they should love their children. And it's very bless a big blessing that you have had parents who were able to do that. That's really cool. Okay, so um, thank you to our panelists, Laura and Dorothy. I thought th those were really uh, nice thoughts. Uh, we hope that, uh, yeah, and I felt that I've learned a lot. So um, let me share a few things at the end of the episode. So first is a book. So um, I really like this book and uh, it partly inspired this episode. So this is a book by Henry Nouwen. He's a Christian author. And it's a book just about reflections on the prodigal son. You know, some Christian books are like very abstract and you know, very theological. No, this is very practical. So, you know, as Laura mentioned, you can put yourself into all three roles and this is what the book does, you know, and it's basically Henry Nouwen answering that second question. He reflects on the ways that he is like the father. He reflects on the ways that he was like the, the prodigal son. He reflects on the ways that he's like the oldest son. Yeah, um, I really like this book. It, it, I felt that it really helped me understand the parable in a deeper way. And yeah, I think a lot of people liked it. It has a 4.28 on uh, Goodreads. So yeah, if you can get a copy of this, I'd recommend it. Yeah, it really, you know, it really like uh, explains the deep beauty of this story in a, in a wonderful way. Okay, so again, I want to remind uh, all of you that this Simbang St. Paul show is a production of St. Paul's Anglican Church in Pataling Jaya. And uh, you can go to our website. Um, actually, it doesn't have to be this complicated. I think you can just use uh, stpaulspj.org.my. Yeah, stpaulspj.org.my will do. Right? You don't have to be such a complicated URL. And I would uh, want, like to ask, you know, if you felt that this story resonated, if you felt that you're, you feel like the prodigal where you've been lost, you know, and you're looking for a way home, if you feel like the older son where you've been trapped in bitterness, you know, the reason that Jesus told the story is that he wants to return all these people, uh, both the younger sons and the older sons, you know, return them back to God the Father, who loves all of us deeply, you know, and is always ready to forgive. And if you want to learn more about that message that Jesus tells us, you know, then we'll, I would welcome you to join us in our services, join us in our community. You can contact us on this page. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. Uh, you can look for St. Paul's PG on Facebook. I guess there was an ad over there. So you can, um, yeah. And I, I, it, it'll be, uh, if you're curious at all you know, about what more Jesus has to say, what other stories Jesus has, and what are the messages he, he teaches, yeah, uh, you are more than welcome to join us. And we are also you know, trying to learn and trying to grow and trying to you know, um, go back to the Father. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to do that in a community. All right. And to end this episode, uh, let's, let's do a collect. Whoops. Okay, this is not correct. To end this episode, let's say a prayer for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, and that's it uh, for this episode. Uh, Laura, would you like to say goodbye to our audience? Thank you very much and goodbye to everyone. God bless. Uh, Dorothy, would you like to say goodbye to our viewers? Thank you, everyone. And thank, thank, thank you for having me in this episode. Right. And uh, that's a thank you for me as well. And to all of you who are watching this Sembang St. Paul episode, goodbye and God bless.